Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. In today's video, we're going to deep dive into the Homey web app. And who better to introduce the web app than Emil Nysa, our creative director. So Emil, why don't you introduce us to it? Well, thanks Alex for having me in, uh, in your studio. Um, so uh, if you can uh, see my, uh, my screen, we're currently on the Homey website, which is homey.app. Um, and if you're logged into our website, uh, you can log in by uh, pressing the avatar icon in the top right. And then you just hit your avatar again once you're logged in and then navigate here to web app. And then the web app will automatically open and it's easy as that. Um, if you uh, want to remember it or want to be there quicker, just bookmark my.homey.app. Pretty easy to remember. So make sure you bookmark my.homey.app to get there really quick. Yes, so um, you're greeted in a, a home screen, which is probably very familiar if you've uh, been using the mobile app as well. So you can see, uh, good afternoon, Alex. Um, I'm logged in as you, by the way. Uh, you can see the weather, uh, you can see who's home and who's not. And you can see your favorite devices and your favorite photos as well. And if you wanna go to your timeline, you just hit here in the top right, the notification icon. And uh, that's uh, the home screen of the web app. So is there anything you want me to show you? So I'd love to first of all see what the devices look like in my browser. All right. Well, we just navigate to devices. It's the, the second option in the sidebar. And you can see here on the uh, left side, you see the, the zones. Uh, and they are showed in the hierarchy they are. So uh, dependent on your home, of course, this is different. But this is how you see your zones. You can tap a zone and then we filter only the devices in that zone. Let's just show them all right now. And then here are your device tiles. Uh, you can see if they're turned off or turned on. Uh, you can scroll through this list. Can you control devices from here? Yes, you can control devices from here. Okay. So uh, let's say we have this, uh, this light here. I believe this is your studio desk it's lamp. It's my studio desk lamp, yeah. So <laughs> one tab opens the device controls here to the right. Uh, and then very similar to the mobile app, you can uh, navigate through the controls. And then of course you can turn it off. And you can turn it on. And if you're more of an advanced user, you can right click on a device tile and then you get more options. Uh, so you can also turn it off here. And if you look closely, you see here that um, there is a shortcut and I'm on a, on a Mac. So this is option and left click and on Windows is alt left click. So let's try that. I hold option here and I click it and the device turns off. So that way you can very uh, quickly toggle your devices. Okay, so you have quick access to devices and you can turn them on and off pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Now. I know secretly, because I've yeah, been playing with it a little bit, but you can move devices from zones a lot easier than you can in the mobile app. Yep, because of course you have a big screen, you have a mouse, so there's there's more stuff you can do more easily. So show me, how do you switch? All right, well, <laughs> what do you think? I'm hoping you just drag and drop. Well, good guess. So you drag and drop your device from the one zone to the other. You can also uh, drag and drop a zone in the sidebar here. Uh, so let's put it back in, uh, in home. Or no, it wasn't Film Studio actually. Uh, so that's how you uh, that move That makes device. it a lot easier. It's a lot easier. And you can also right click it, move to, and then select the zone here where to move it to as well. If you want to go to the device settings, by the way, you just hit settings here in the right click, or you open the controls here and you tap the gear icon in the top right. And if you want to favorite them, so they show up on your home screen and they show up in Siri shortcuts, Alexa, Google, etc. Just click the heart icon. Oh, you just like your favorite device. Exactly. And then you're happy. Okay. And I see in the top left there, a few different ways mm -hmm. of displaying your devices. Mm -hmm. So why did you guys choose to have different ways to see your devices? Well, so uh, a desktop brings more um, possibilities than a mobile device, of course. Um, and we also think that um, on a desktop, uh, the users who are using that are usually a little bit more advanced. Uh, also because it's easier to manage your smart home than use it uh, compared to a mobile app. So you can see that currently uh, this icon has been selected, but uh, we have a large device tiles feature and you see that the tiles, yeah, it's beautiful. Isn't yeah, it? I love the large device tiles. Yeah, okay. so uh, much requested by the way, So and we know that of course. So we implemented it here and then you can uh, see all the values of your devices uh, instantly. So for example, we have a, a home coach device um, which is a, uh, a device from NetAdmo and it measures a lot of stuff. So it's a great sensor. And then you can see the temperature, CO2, humidity, etc. And you can scroll in the device tile to see all the values. And you can do the same with the Sonos. Of course. So you see what's playing. Yes, you can see instantly what the, the album, the artist, you too in this case. You can even see the duration, uh, etc. 
So it is really a, a little bit more advanced, of course, but if you want a, in one glance your entire home uh, in detail, in detail, large then, then this is your view. And then we have another one, and this is also one I, I really like. Uh, this is for the, let's say, people who really like to manage their smart home. Uh, we go to the table view, and here you see all the devices in one table. And uh, that's nice, but the best feature, of course, is you can sort the table. So let's say I want to sort by app. Now you can see that all the apps are, uh, or devices are being sorted. Um, but let's say I want to sort by battery status. So now you can sort which batteries are running out ah. from all your devices. Yeah, that's You can even sort by energy. energy usage. So you can see which devices are using the most energy. So this, this table brings even more functionality by just displaying your devices in a different way. So you can start organizing your home a little bit better, get better insights into your devices, manage their battery status, all that kind of stuff with a nice list exactly. of your devices in your home. Exactly. Great. So you've also got Flows built into it. Yes. And we made sure Flows work great. Of course, Flow is one of the core features of Homey. So we really wanted to make sure that it works great on, uh, on desktop. Um, so on the, on the left side, again, you have your Flows and the, the folders. And of course, everything is drag and drop here. Um, if you want to manage your, your flows in, in their folders. And if you want to create a new flow, um, we made sure that... So a flow card has these, uh, these values you can put in there, like say something and then you can type what Homie says, right? Um, and previously in the flow for web, uh, you clicked on the flow card and then you got a sidebar with all the values you had to fill them in. Really felt like a hassle, like, like filling it out of, out of form. Well, nobody likes to fill in forms. So, <laughs> Let's just show you how we do that now. So first you press add a, uh, add a card and I can search for the card or I can navigate to the card. So we got on the sidebar here, everything uh, your homie has. So these are all your devices and your zones in the right hierarchy. This is everything that homie provides and then all your apps as well. You can even go to uh, uh, a device through the app. So that's also very nice if you don't remember where you place your device, but you know it's a Sonos, for example. Or if you have lots of devices from the same brand, mm -hmm. you can quickly find... You can see all ones. the devices in one glance. Um, but let's get back to what I wanted to tell you. So let's say we have this Say card, and you can see that the argument is already in, in the card. And I just have to tap it, and I can type it, and then you can see the value in the card directly. And if we want to edit it again, just tap it and you can edit it. And if you want to put a tag in it, so a tag is a, a value that is or uh, provided by the flow, flow uh, when card, or it's something that Homie knows, like the current time or the date, or... I've, I've got a video on that. So if you guys are looking for more information on tags, then I've got a whole video over Homie Logic you can check out, and I'll add that in the description down below. So if you need that, make sure to check out the video. That's great. Um, so if you want to uh, add one of those tags in the web app, you just hit the tag icon here and you can just tap the tag and it's there. And you can type around it as well. Okay, Right. amazing. Yeah, so it's super intuitive. You can just jump straight into it and start editing all your flow cards yes. and add and strings in. And if you want to, you can add in those tags as you're going. Exactly. And you already mentioned uh, Logic. Um, so Logic has uh, these variables you can change yourself. And they are placed here under this button. And you can see all the variables, or you and I have two. <laughs> I don't have too many variables, that's right. That's, that's fine, well, we can create a new one. Just hit new variable and you get this beautiful dialog. Is the text, the number, or yes, no variable. Uh, and we can just put your name in here. We can save it. And then it's under here. You can edit it in line as well. So it's, it's very convenient to manage all your variables. Great, super intuitive. I guess you're making great use of more screen space Absolutely. for managing your smart home because the Homey app, obviously you're tied to certain constraints on a mobile view. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way of actually getting, I get a little bit more detail in what you're doing and making it more intuitive to use. So you can just jump in, edit variables, edit flows, change different things. That's spot on. So every um, screen size and, and input method, so a mouse or a touch screen, uh, has just different ways of handling uh, user input, basically. Yeah. Um, so, and we really try to take the best of both platforms uh, and make it, make it work on that platform in a great way. Great. I mean, I love the look of it. Um, I know that there's also insights built into it. 
of course. So before we had a separate web page that you would visit for your Homey Insights, mm -hmm. and now it's all actually in the web app. Yeah, so we replaced that separate website with the web app uh, with Insights built in. So let's just go there. Um, yes, I'm sure I don't want to save this flow. So uh, this is my uh, insights. And then here on the left, you have all the insights uh, your homie has, uh, has aggregated. So let's just show the temperature, the pressure and the humidity uh, of, of your homie's location. And then here you can change the, the time scale. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to see this from the last 31 days. And now you can see the temperature here in uh, the Netherlands uh, where we are located. You can see that. Well, that, that's nice, but let's just uh, close these or just hit close all in the top. Uh, but it can also drag and drop these. And this is nice. And let's say I have another uh, chart with the temperature. I can hit this button here, add chart, and then you can see all the other charts which, has the, which have the same unit, so uh, degrees Celsius. And you can combine them in one chart. So uh, my home coach, for example, well, uh, we just added it recently, so we, there's not much data yet, but let's just go here to last hour. You can see that the charts are being combined, so you can easily compare them as well. Okay, you so you can, for instance, if you have various sensors set up in different places in your home, you can track the temperature of different zones or different rooms where you have those sensors set up. Yeah, and then combine them in one chart. Okay. And you can even drag and drop that. So let's see, we have a Honeywell temperature here. Well, it's pretty constant now. Yeah. But so I, I tap it and then it enables it in a new chart, but it can also just drop it inside the chart you already have and then combine them together. If you want to uh, download, for example, your data, you just right click it or click the three uh, dots there yep. uh, and uh, tap download. So you can download it and export it to a CSV file, which you then can import into Excel, for example. If you're really a data nerd, you can go all the way. Okay. And how? long do you actually track this information? So how long does Homey Insights store information over your smart home? So you can see that if you if you tap here, um, which is the time range, and uh, the largest time range lasts two years. Okay. So we track two years of your data. Uh, what's good to know is that over time, your data will be averaged a little bit to save disk space, basically, okay. Homey. Yeah. Um, I won't go too in-depth there, but uh, nobody is really interested in like, one and a half year ago at, at 3 p.m., what was my temperature? You're just interested in the average temperature for, for those uh, Okay, six so hours, it aggregates basically. it and takes then, I'm guessing, per month or per week, if you were looking over mm -hmm. a year, then it would save that data. Yeah, I think from the top of my head for a year, it's about every six hours. Okay. And for the last hour, it's every five seconds. So dependent on how long ago it is, uh, the more average it is. All right, amazing. I mean, you can get a lot of power out of this, especially for, for instance, energy. If you're having yes. a look at you know your, how your energy is being consumed, what devices are using up a lot, you can track that all with insights mm -hmm. in the Homey web app. Absolutely. Even I, I really like to make charts of, of one year and then I see the temperature outside and the temperature inside and my energy uses. And you can see those are completely opposite charts. So the colder it gets outside because it's winter, you know, the more energy I'm using inside. Interesting. And that's what Insights is for. So that's an insight into your home. Exactly. All right. And um, I mean, obviously we have Homey Energy. Mm -hmm. And is that coming to the web app? So if you click Energy right now, you get a, a under construction page. Um, but it is coming to the Homey web app. Great to know. I'm going to be looking out for that because I use energy management in my home. Also mm -hmm. with a smart meter plugged into it. And I'm looking at installing some solar panels. Everything you can connect with Homey. I'm going to be setting that up. So great. I'm going to be using this, I think, a lot. That's great. But for the time being, so you remember the table view for your devices, you can already sort there your devices and you can uh, see the battery level of your devices as well. I see there's one more icon on the left there. Mm -hmm. And I know that's about Homey Script. It is. It's the last one here. But we're going to keep that for another video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. For next week, we're going to have a video about Homey Script and how that works and how you guys can start using it in your home if you have a little bit of Java scripting knowledge and know-how. So Emil, is there anything that we've missed or that you might want to cover still? Yeah, I think we didn't mention dark mode yet. So there's an icon here in the, in the top right. Uh, and if you hit it, then you, uh, well, it's dark mode. <laughs> what else can we say? Uh, so everything in, uh, in Homey is dark mode, especially insights. Uh, it's very, very beautiful. Um, to see these colors uh, in dark mode. So that's great if you're trying to access this at night and you don't want to get blinded by the white screen. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're a night owl, then this is really uh, for you. Um, 
And the, the last one I think we didn't mention yet um, is the plus icon here. So if you want to add something new, like a new device or a new flow, new variable, then you can hit it as well. So new device, I think we didn't even cover it, but it's, it's pretty familiar. So you can just search your brand uh, and install your I've device. I've got plenty of videos on how to add new devices and adding a whole bunch of different devices, but this does make it easy. I must admit that sometimes it is handy to do that on the mobile app, since sometimes you gotta be close to the device while you're connecting it and pairing it yeah, up. Yeah, if you like to need to read a, a QR code or, or some pair code, it's, it's really hard to you know, grab your laptop and go there. Um, but it, it depends. Sometimes you have to log in with the username and password, and that might be easier on your computer. So for cloud-connected devices like Sonos or NetAtmo, then exactly. this would be perfect. Yes. So now that I've got you here in the studio, I'm sure that a lot of viewers are gonna want me to ask, but what else do you have planned for the web app? Well, of course, Homey Energy is still on the roadmap. Um, and from then on, uh, we have some, some nice ideas, but we don't really talk about what we're going to develop in the future. Uh, we'd rather surprise you with what we came up with. All right. So Emil, thanks for joining me and diving into the web app together. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Now, to get there for you, just type in my.homey.app and make sure that you favorite that page so you quickly have access to your smart home anywhere you are in the world.